Pardon the interruption, but I'm Sean Humphrey, and to all of America, it is truly basketball season right now. And I'm Matt Marcinkowski, and apparently to Sean, the past five months of the NBA hasn't counted. That's not what I said, Matt, but we will get into NBA news today. We're going to start with Paul George in Oklahoma City. He's having an excellent season, but Matt, James Harden is also having a great year in Houston. Should Paul George be considered a top MVP candidate? Well, Paul George should definitely be considered a top MVP candidate. He's averaging 27 points per game right now. The Oklahoma City Thunder currently have a better record than the Houston Rockets, despite James Harden's stretch of 24 straight games, averaging 30 or more points. But I will say right now, thanks to those 24 games for James Harden, he's definitely the top candidate right now for MVP. I do respect that James Harden might be the top candidate for MVP, but the main thing that I measure in MVP is what you contribute to your team's success. And though James Harden is keeping the Rockets above the water because of Chris Paul's injury, you look at a guy like Paul George, who is averaging a career high in points and rebounds right now, almost six points more than he averaged last year, obviously contributing to the Thunder's success because they weren't this successful last year. With him playing the way he is right now, the Thunder are one of the best teams in the NBA, a legitimate threat in the Western Conference, which I don't know if I can say of the Rockets. So Paul George should be considered a top MVP candidate, even if it's above James Harden. Definitely, and the way Oklahoma City is built, I think they'll go a little bit deeper in the playoffs than Houston will. Absolutely. But we're going to move on to the trade news, big time trade news in Oklahoma, not Oklahoma <coughs> City, in New York City. The Big Apple, Chris Stapps Porzingis, has been traded to the Dallas Mavericks. Matt, do you think this is a good deal for the Knicks? Are they set up for the future like they think they are? They, they've they cleared up $71 million in cap space. They think they're going to sign free agents. Do you think, do you think they'll get there? Well, after looking at this trade and reviewing who Dallas got and who the Knicks got, Dallas definitely won the trade right now, getting uh, Chris Stops and the two and Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway Jr. But in the future, I think this will definitely benefit the Knicks more, freeing up seventy-one million dollars in cap space. D over the summer, the Knicks will most likely draft Zion Williamson from Duke. This will give them a definite young core with Zion, Dennis Smith Jr., and Alonzo Trier. That $71 million cap space allows them to sign Zion for a lengthy amount of time and possibly allows them to bring in a free agent veteran that can hopefully father these young players for the next two to so three here, years. Here's my problem with the New York Knicks. Here is my problem with the Knicks. They've cleared up $71 million in cap space, thinking they're going to sign big-time free agents like Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Look at the direction of their franchise right now. You've got a guy in Chris Stapps Porzingis who was drafted to be the guy in New York City. The guy for the New York Knicks, one of the premier franchises in the NBA. And he decides he wants out after a few years because he's not satisfied with the direction that the team is going in. Why would a player who has already established himself in the NBA, like Kyrie Irving, like Kevin Durant, go to a team that is that dysfunctional, so dysfunctional that a guy that has not made his way in the league decides that he cannot stay there because they're not going in a positive direction. That $71 million in cap space is not going to benefit the Knicks, and they should hope that those two draft picks they got turn into superstars, big-time bona fide studs. Definitely, and with Dirk leaving Dallas this season, they pretty much just got, what, Dirk 2.0 in Porzingis? I don't know about that. Porzingis is the unicorn. He's his own player. We're going to move on to more trade news, a trade that hasn't happened yet. Anthony Davis in the, for the New Orleans Pelicans is going to be on the move soon, but to where and when, we don't know. Matt, should the Pelicans look to offload Anthony Davis before the deadline. Well, Sean, I think we can both agree in that they should definitely do it before the trade deadline. Most teams who are looking to make a playoff run, who want to get Anthony Davis and to propel them further and deeper in the playoffs, are most likely willing to offer more and better players for someone of Anthony Davis's caliber. What do you think? Absolutely. I think the Pelicans have lost leverage in this deal. They cannot wait. If they wait until the offseason, the team's not going to give up a ton when they think they might be able to sign Kevin Durant. They Definitely might be able not. to sign Kyrie Irving. A team that's pushing for a championship right now, like the Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron James, they do not want to waste his window. And on top of that, the Lakers are the only place that Anthony Davis seems to want to stay. So a team's going to bank on him being a one-year rental and think that they can sign him to a, to a long-term deal? They can't do that. So the Pelicans should offload him now while teams are willing to give up a lot to get him. And in the end, this could wind up benefiting New Orleans a little bit more to whoever Anthony Davis goes to. 
That's all the time we have for this week's episode. We might be back later this week with more NBA news. The trade deadline is on Thursday. I'm Sean Humphrey. And I'm Matt Marcinkowski. And we'll see you next time.